Hi, welcome back to the Cozy Sound channel and an update on my triple sec sequencer clock module. Uh, so the clock module on the end here. In the last video, I talked about um, how I put together a very simple way of generating four clock signals. Essentially, it's a 4106 square wave oscillator um, configured such that I essentially get four low frequency oscillators, LFOs, and I can use those LFO signals to act as a clock to trigger my sequencer. One of the things I wanted to do was one, one of the clocks be able to distribute it down all four outputs so I could use a common clock to clock four sequences or dividers or whatever. And when I did this without any buffering or anything on there, um, I could on occasions run into problems. Either the, the clock slowed down a bit because of the, the load on there or other weird things happened. And I suggested that um, I could buffer the outputs. Well, I thought about it and played around with a few ideas and rather than buffering the output of every single clock there was only one clock that was going to be loading up so what I decided to do was to use the same circuit that is actually in this module here on project 12 which is a buffered gate and that takes a gate signal input buffers that signal and then generates a number of outputs. So basically all I needed to do was repeat that circuit and put it in there. So we'll have a look at the strip, uh, the schematic diagram for it and this is the schematic with the gate buffer circuit added. So it's just, just at the top of the diagram there you, you can see the uh, op amp with what's essentially a, a couple of a voltage divider um, there's a diode in there which kind of makes sure that the signal is going in the right direction um, kind of a bit of crude rectification and then the output <clears throat> is a nice buffered signal which will be um, just below the the supply rail so that that will provide me with a number of um, nice strong square wave type outputs and I can distribute those across the other output sockets via the switches so it's, it's not that dissimilar to what I had before it's just incorporating the gate buffer circuit design um, and what I've done in order to do that rather than completely build an entire new board I've actually built a, a gate buffer on a small separate board which I've then wired into the main one so we'll, we'll move in a little closer and, and, and have a look at that and you can see what that looks like here we are a little more up close so this is the clock module this is the original board which is just the four 4106 oscillators but then to add the buffer circuit to the first of the oscillators I built a little piggyback board which has the op amp on there a bunch of resistors and, and the diode at the top there and then it's wired out to the switches which allow me to send so essentially I've, I've got the clock one coming in at the bottom there and then I've got three more outputs so clock one goes to its output and to this board but then those outputs go to the switches on each of the clocks two three and four and depending on which way you throw the switch depends whether you get the independent clock from the clock board or you get the shared signal of clock one from the clock buffer, the gate buffer board. Um, the strip board layout for this gate buffer board looks like this. 
so it's very small very compact very few components um, and it's just basically an, an add-on you could incorporate it on the end of your um, um, oscillator board your main clock board if you really wanted to do that um, I just thought that I'd got the board built I didn't want to kind of start from scratch again so I just built an additional board that kind of piggybacks on onto that one so that's that's what it looks like um, and that, that's the strip board layout so so yeah you've you've uh, you've seen that end of it let's uh, the front of it actually looks pretty much the same so spin it round so here we are the clock board I've actually not got it powered up but uh, essentially what happens is that will turn clock one on or off and then each of these switches are off in the middle and then if it goes up what it's doing in the up positions and that's for all three of these it's now taking the signal from the gate buffer and in the middle it's off in the down position it's taking the signal from the respective uh, LFO on the 4106 board so any of them can be switched in either direction or off um, like I said the clock one is, is, is simply just on or off um, the eagle eyed amongst you will have spotted another board at the side of it well that is the next bit of the triple sec sequencer project to come along um, I was asked if there was going to be a clock divider on there it's a clock divider not for this video I'm going to make another video which describes how I did that but again I'm starting with a very simple circuit but um, more of that in the next video so if you're interested then yeah you can come back and see what I did with that but for now I think I've got uh, a multiple clock module that's as simple as I can possibly make it that now will give me the kind of outputs that I want and I've shown you the circuit diagram I've shown you the strip board layout in the last video you, I showed you the strip board layout for the actual clock circuit in this video you've now got the strip board layout for the piggyback board to get the uh, gate buffer on, onto clock one if you're wanting to kind of follow this project and have a go at building your own, then you've got everything you need. So yeah, go on, have a go. Why not? Build your own.